Hi, right, David Can here with another question from the Question Bank in Topic 7.3. We're looking at the structure of matter. Incidentally, it's also a terrible thunderstorm out right now, which is appropriate because particle physics is basically mad science. But let's take a look at what the question says. It says, state what is meant by an exchange particle. Well, exchange particles are particles transmitted for the result of fundamental uh, force exchange. Basically, they're the medium through which the fundamental forces uh, are applied to real particles. In 1935, physicist Hideki Yukawa predicted that the strong interaction between nucleons was mediated by particles called mesons. Given the range of the strong interaction at approximately 1.5 times 10 to the negative 15th meters, calculate the possible values for the rest mass of a meson. So there's some sort of restriction on the, on the rest mass of this meson, restriction on its energy, and that comes from the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, which tells us that the momentum and the restriction on position are paired quantities, and the product of the two cannot exceed Planck's constant on 4 pi. Now, it doesn't look like that gives us rest mass, but it actually does, because mesons will travel at the speed of light, which means that their momentum can be calculated as their rest mass times the speed of light. We'll simplify, call it mcx, and we'll just say that it's equal to h on 4 pi to give us a maximum value for that rest mass. Solving for the rest mass, we get h on 4 pi uh, cx. Now we know all of those things. 6.6 6 times 10 to the negative 34. divided by 4 pi times the speed of light times that restriction on its position, 1.5 times 10 to the negative 15th. If you punch that into your calculator, you should get 1.2 to two significant figures times 10 to the negative 28th. Uh, and that would be kilograms for rest mass. Right. In the next question, it says that a meson called the pion was detected in a cosmic ray interaction in 1947 by Powell and Acciolini. The pion comes in three possible charge states, a positive charge, a negative charge, and a neutral charge. We have a Feynman diagram below representing a possible interaction in which a pion participates. We want to state and explain whether the meson produced is positive, negative, or neutral. First, we need to understand what the Feynman diagram is telling us. As time goes on, this proton exchanges a pion to become a neutron. And this neutron receives the pion to become a proton. So what's happening is that the positive charge in the proton is being transferred to the pion so that the proton can become neutrally charged. Meanwhile, the neutrally charged neutron receives that positive charge and becomes positively charged. This is telling us that it must be a positive pion because charge must be conserved at each intersection in the Feynman diagram. All right, uh, part C we're going to skip, or excuse me, D we're going to skip, and part E, explain why, according to the quark model, it's not possible for a particle to consist of only two quarks. The reason is that all quarks 
have, uh, excuse me, all quarks have baryon number one third. And the reason the baryon, baryon number is one third because, is because you need three quarks to combine together to give you a whole baryon. And so the reason we can't have uh, just two quarks is that particles, so in addition to quarks having baryon number one third, all particles made from quarks must have baryon number negative one, zero, or one. And you can't produce negative one, zero, or one with just two quarks, each having baryon number one-third.